Hey everybody, it's Gomladex, and welcome back to some more Magic Arena, and today I'll be playing another premiere draft of Kaladesh Remastered. So without further ado, let's get into our pack one, pick one. Our rare is a colorless rare, but it is not a very good one for limited. All it's going to do is gain us some random amount of life that's not going to be enough to justify the four mana entry fee for that cost. Um, I do like to take colorless cards, pack one, pick one, but these colorless cards in this pack are all pretty dang weak. Definitely not pick one, pack one worthy. When we look at the monocolored cards that are good, we have Daring Demolition, which is solid, Leave in the Dust, which is also fine interaction. Other than that, Eddie Trailhawk, if we're aggressive, Drew to the Cowl, if we're trying to ramp. This is probably a pack where we could take one of these uncommons. We have Aether Hub, which will be good mana fixing for any deck. Winding Constrictor, which can be very powerful in an energy or plus one plus one counter deck, or ideally both. And then Contraband Kingpin, I think that is just enough weaker than Winding Constrictor that I'm just going to take Constrictor. Kind of a weak, uh, a weak pack one there. Didn't see any super, super good mono colored cards, unfortunately, so I'm just going to just going to hop onto a gold card, pack one, pick one, even though I generally don't like to do that, as it is going to tie me into two colors right off the bat, and it'll be less likely that that makes the cut. So pick two, we see a million blue cards, and many of them are very powerful. Skyship Plunderer can add extra energy or plus one, plus one counters to target permanent each turn. It's like a miniature proliferate. Aether Swooper. Uh, we played a lot of these in our last deck. It was super powerful. Get two energy when it enters the battlefield. Use that two energy to make a servo. So at worst, it's a two mana one two flyer that comes with a one one servo on the ground. But then we have a really, really powerful uncommon here. Rogue Refiner is a three mana three two. And when it enters the battlefield, you draw a card and get two energy. Usually, your creature is going to be much weaker of a stat line for its mana cost if it's coming with uh, an enter the battlefield effect like drawing a card. This is coming with an enter the battlefield effect to draw a card and get two energy and it's basically only losing one toughness from being just your average three mana creature so the card's pretty absurd and i'm going to take it there and if we can end up like green black and blue energy this is a really good start the rogue refiner does synergize quite well with the winding constrictor that being said there's nothing great in green black or blue here wild wanderer is a little interesting because it could pick out pick up a, a swamp out of our deck could give us our splash color but it is not the greatest for its cost, it's a little slow, 4 mana, 3, 2, all that kind of stuff. Um, and the black cards are not great, and the blue cards are not great. Malfunction's fine if you're low on removal, Hinterland Drake fine if you're low on creatures, Aether Tradewinds is whatever. I think the best cards in here by far are Chandra's Revolution as pretty decently costed removal, and then Scrapper Champion as a big potential game ender in red, a 2-2 death touch that becomes, I'm sorry, a 2-2 double strike that becomes a 3-3 double strike the first time it attacks. I'm just going to take Scrapper Champion. This is a pretty big bomb in the uncommon slot, and uh, we're just really not sure what we're doing right now. We're just going to be bouncing between a lot of different colors. So for pick four, our rare is just a blue counter spell. It's a very average counter spell, not something you actually take much higher than you would any other counter spell. Um, in red, we have Furious Reprisal, which is fine. Two damage to two different targets. Not actually super in love with this card. Um, it's the same amount of damage that Chandra's Revolution does. And in red, you're going to have a lot of um, cheap removal that can do two damage to one target, like Chandra's Pyro Helix. So I feel like um, what you're really lacking in removal in red is removal that can kill big creatures, and Reprisal still doesn't help with that. So I'm not a huge fan of Reprisal. Gear Seeker Serpent's pretty good. It gets cost reducted. Uh, a decent amount in this format, especially if you have servo token production. But I think I'm going to go with the Kujar Seed Sculptor. We have two green cards already. This would be our third green card. So green is our most likely color. And this is a pretty solid two drop all by itself. It's a two mana, two, three, which is right where you want to be. And if you have another card that it would be good to put plus and plus one counters on, you can get a lot of value off that, which is nice. All right, Thriving Turtle is a sweet one drop. Another one where if you haven't seen the last draft, you might not have seen how crazy the turtle can be, but in a dedicated energy deck like this, this uh, this just one mana dork can turn into your biggest threat on the board and really uh, try to end the game. So I like Thriving Turtle a lot. I like Aether Theorist a lot as well. It gives you a lot of energy for such a cheap cost. Um, 
but I like the Thriving Turtle a bit better here, especially with Winding Constrictor being potentially in this deck, where the Turtle can get an extra plus one plus one counter every time it attacks. So we're going to go with this Thriving Turtle here. Ooh, pick six Aether Hub. Don't mind if I do. This is great for just any deck at all. Even if you're just two colors, just really make sure that your mana is going to work out quite well. And it's obviously at its best um, in a dedicated energy deck, then it's just absurd. So we're going to take the Aether Hub here over not much else. I don't love the Sage because of the one toughness. Um, there's a lot of things to kill one toughness creatures in this format and a lot of one toughness or one power uh, tokens. Um... Ornamental Courage is a fine trick. Rebuff I don't like because it doesn't counter artifacts, and Ice Over I don't like because it's only locking down something that has already attacked and got some value. Okay, I do like Shipwreck Moray. I'm not a massive fan of any of these black cards, so I think I'll just go with the Shipwreck Moray. It's just a lot of energy for 4 mana. 4 mana to get 4 energy is pretty dang nice and it's got a decent way to use that energy being able to convert this into whatever the perfect size creature is for whatever combat it's getting in be that a zero five a two three or a four one the best black card here is probably malfus squad just a decent evasive threat uh, but fourth bridge prowler is okay as well if you have a lot of vehicles that can crew for one now not much in here fen hauler is really slow i've played it in a couple decks and just never had seven mana um Tezzeret's Ambitions, pretty big card draw, draw three. Puzzle Knot, you gotta be in white to use this well. Yeah, I'll just take a Tezzeret's Ambition. Alright, I do like Leave in the Dust quite a bit. Four mana at instant speed, return a non-land permanent to its owner's hand and draw a card. Pretty easy pick here. Narnam Cobra's okay, but it falls into that same problem one toughness creatures have. You've got to be cream of the crop one toughness creatures for me to want to run you, and I would qualify Skyship Plutterer as a cream of the crop one toughness creature. It gets around some of the issues with one toughness creatures where it gets above servo tokens. It does still die to Fourth Bridge Prowler, Chandra Spire Helix, all that kind of stuff, Thopter tokens, but this is just really good in an energy deck, getting another energy every time it hits your opponent, and just being a two mana two one flyer. It's a pretty nice deal. Uh, Aether Tradewinds is pretty solid in an energy deck as well, because most of your creatures have an Enter the Battlefield effect to get more energy, so I'll take that here over Hinterland Drake, but this is a fine filler uh, flyer as well. Ornamental Courage is a fine trick. We're definitely leaning towards blue-green at this point. Potentially blue-green splashing red or blue-green splashing black. I doubt we're going to splash both colors in. We'll find out here. Alright, so the rare in this pack, Key to the City. If you think of this card like a bag of holding from recent limited formats where it's um, tap it, draw a card, discard a card for two mana, it's not the greatest deal ever. Obviously in a board state where you really need unblockable creatures, it can be pretty good, but it's a pretty slow card when you think about it that way, so I'm not a, a huge fan of it. I do like Thriving Rhino a lot in energy decks, so I'm probably going to take this here. All by itself, it's going to be a 3-4 four for 3 mana the first time it attacks, and if you can get a bunch of extra energy to go with it, it's just going to keep getting bigger and bigger and bigger and just snowballing into a massive threat. So this is the best on-color card, but there's a pretty solid... Um, Pretty solid vehicle here, Daredevil Dragster. Three mana for a vehicle that crews for two to be a 4-4, four, four, but it does get sacrificed after it's been crewed two times, but then you draw two cards out of it, so it's a pretty fine deal. Um, other good cards in there are like Pyro Helix if we wanted to start leaning in towards the red, but I'm going to stick to uh, to the blue-green core of this deck and take another Thriving Rhino here out of this pack. Phenomenal, phenomenal aggressive creature here, and we can really just push into blue-green so we know we're making great use of our energy theme and our rogue refiner, which is one of the strongest cards we have. So I'm going with Thriving Rhino here. The uh, best card in this pack is probably Vengeful Revel. If a permanent left the battlefield, the turn left your battlefield, the turn that you play Vengeful Rebel. Um, this will be minus three, minus three when you cast it, which is super nice. A three mana three two that also kills creature is sick, but Thriving Rhino is also pretty sick, not quite as good, and it's in the colors we're definitely playing, so I'm going Thriving Rhino over Rebel. And then behind the Rebels, probably like Furious Reprisal, I guess. It's the next best card. Alright, another Kujar Seed Sculptor. Pretty big fan of this. There's also Prophetic Prism and Blossoming March, both as good ways to manifix us and help us get this Winding Constrictor in here. I think I like Prophetic Prism the most, because it's going to help manifest us either way, towards the black or the red. Um, but 
Kujar Seed Sculpture would be a pretty nice pick as well. Our green blue stuff is looking powerful enough. We don't necessarily need to splash. And getting another two drop creature in here is going to help the curve a lot because right now we have one at one mana and two at two mana. Um, that being said, I'm going to get a little, uh, little splashy here. We already have an Aether Hub, so let's get an Aether Hub and a Prism um, so we can splash one of these solid cards. Or maybe splash some, uh, some Bomber we open up later or something like that. Uh, nothing great in green or blue again. There's Inventor's Goggles. I don't think this is going to be an Inventor's Goggles deck here. We have one Artificer. Although this is good even to just put on your Servo Tokens, but we don't have a lot of Servo Token production either. We actually have zero Servo Token production. Yeah, it does not seem like an Inventor's Goggles deck. Um, so I guess it's Furious Reprisal. I don't like Era of, Inter of Innovation because you have to spend extra mana to be getting all that, uh, that energy. And you have to play off curve to do that. Start playing two mana cards, turn three, three mana cards, turn four, stuff like that. I'm just going to take Furious Reprisal. High Spire Artisan's okay, but I already have three really good three mana cards. Um, so I don't know if we'll have room for it. Ooh, Whirler Virtuoso. All right, I guess we're going for the Red Splash then, because this is a beautiful card for any energy deck. Entering the battlefield with three energy and being able to spend three energy at any time to make a 1-1 one -one Flying Thopter. Whirler Virtuoso is one of the best energy payoffs, and it is going to push us in that direction. Metalwork Colossus, a really fun card, but uh, way too much mana. If you're the dream deck that has like five prophetic prisms and a bunch of vehicles, sometimes you could play this for pretty cheap, but we are not that deck. We have one prism for cost reduction on the metalwork colossus so we're the virtuoso time all right illusionist stratagem probably fine in this uh in the kind of energy deck because we flicker our energy producing cards get more energy out of them and draw a card if we flicker a rogue refiner we're living the dream i could also take high spire infusion decently costed card because we're getting a combat trick and some energy that card's fine but everything else on color not great We'll just take the Stratagem. Okay, another Aether Hub. Slam Dunk, Windmill Slam, get in my deck. Unbridled Growth, another fine way to splash, but I really like the Aether Hub as a way to splash in the energy decks. Another Shipwreck Moray. Chandra's Pyro Helix, although red is the splash. But we could wait to Pyro Helix till later in the game. Uh, trying to sort out all my non-creatures into this pile at the end here. Hmm, Gear Seeker's a big finisher. Yeah, I mean, I'll go Pyro Helix here. I don't have a lot of removal. Wow, Pyro Helix always go really late right now. I'll take another Pyro Helix, I guess. Reservoir Walker would be fine in here. Pretty low creature count. We can focus on that in the last pack, though. Now that we're picking up some great removal. I'll take a Nibble Innovator, but I'm not that happy to play it. I think I'd be less happy with Wildfast Monitor since I already have four three-mana creatures. Mm. More random removal. Appetite for the Unnatural here. I'm not going to splash in a Gremlins. Super late Inventor's Goggles. Don't think it ends up in this deck, but... Yeah, Error of Innovation definitely doesn't. In my opinion, oh, massively late Weldfast Engineer. Nobody's in Rakdos in this draft pod. But that makes sense. If everybody's playing a two-color strategy, um, then uh, in your average draft pod, that means three different two-color combos are not going to be represented. All right, we're going to slam another Rogue Refiner in this deck. This is very easy for us to cast. Green and blue are our main colors. And again, it's just such, such a good deal getting energy a card draw and a 3-2 for only 3 mana. So we're definitely going to take that card. We'd love to wheel Thriving Turtle or Nature's Way. A fine removal spell and a fine turtle to try to take over the game. Self-Assembler is a super good card if we could have picked this up in pack 1 or, or pack 2. Love having uh, 2 copies of these. 2 or more copies of this in pretty much any deck. But uh, late enough in the draft now we're just taking Rogue Refiner. Because it's entirely possible, if not likely, that we won't get another self-assembler. And uh, Rogue Refiner is just more powerful than a self-assembler. The reason that I'd maybe take self-assemblers higher than Rogue Refiners early in the draft is just because the self-assembler fits into any deck and Rogue Refiner fits into a really strict 
uh, colored pair. Uh, this is an, an easy third rogue refiner. This is just the triple rogue refiner deck. Let's go. Maverick Thopters now to splash. Very similar to the Whirler Virtuoso where it's giving us multiple Thopters. This one we can improvise to play early by tapping our Prophetic Prism to help cast it. Stuff like that. Yeah, Maverick Thopters. This is the strongest card in this pack. Narnum Renegade's pretty good too. Just a very cheap Death Toucher. Uh, Aether Theorist is nice. Uh, but it's got to be Thopterist here. Oh, Pima Outrider is nice as well. Just a solid body uh, trampler. Got Skyskiff to use our um, Thopters to crew. But we actually don't have a bunch of servos to crew Skyskiff. I'm not sure how good Skyskiff is in this deck. Um, that being said, we're taking it over what? Chandra's Revolution? I don't have any removal that does more than two damage right now. So Chandra's Revolution actually does seem probably... Potentially pretty good here. I'm going to take Chandra's Revolution. Ooh. Third Aether Hub for the easiest splash ever. The other on-color cards are Gremlins. <laughs> That's about it. I guess the Cobra's in here, but again, don't like it against uh, Servos at all. Okay, another Renegade map, but now we have four mana fixing cards already. Triple Prism. I'm sorry, Triple Aether Hub and a Prism. So I think I'd rather get a win condition here. Big old Gear Seeker Serpent. Make it unblockable late game. Cast it for relatively cheap. Now we've got uh, more win conditions than just one Thriving Turtle. Okay, another Gear Seeker Serpent. Probably rather take Lifecraft Cavalry than a second Gear Seeker Serpent here. Just kind of uh, vary our win conditions a bit. In terms of their mana costs. This is just a 5 mana 4-4 four, four trample. If a permanent left the battlefield to turn you play it, then it is a uh, 5 mana 6-6 six, six trample. And I mean, if a permanent left your battlefield, if a permanent you control left the battlefield, then it'll be a 6-6 six, six trample. Alright, let's start cutting all of the nonsense I don't want to play, like uh, Ice Over, Inventor's Goggles, Winding Constrictor... Well, I'm going to have to make some legit cuts to this deck. Another Chandra's Revolution. Uh, there's no creature I would play here. Maybe I'd play an Eager Construct just because I'm really low on one and two mana creatures. Uh, Reservoir Walker's fine too. I feel like I'm doing pretty good on five mana and up creatures though. Yeah, I don't know if I'm doing double revolution. It's probably better than an Eager Construct though. We wield the Thriving Turtle, living the dream. We also wield the Self-Assembler. Normally, I'd say that's pretty unreasonable, but I didn't see a single Self-Assembler in any of the other packs, so it's possible that in our draft pod, we just didn't open up <laughs> any Self-Assemblers. So literally, oh, nobody in the draft pod has a Self-Assembler right now. So nobody is like going to take this one because they're like, well, it's not good if I only have one copy. So that could just be an awkward uh, draft pod for the Self-Assembler. Uh, I'm not going to play any of this. I guess implement is more likely than sail back. But that's very unlikely. Throw a bunch of stuff in the sideboard here. All right, let's build ourselves a teamer energy deck. Okay, so we need to cut six cards here. We currently have 16 creatures, 13 non-creatures. Pretty average counts there. I'd like to keep uh, about 16 creatures, but Innovator is our worst creature, I think. Again, normally a huge fan of creatures that uh, draw a card when they enter the battlefield, but this is just small enough in a format that's just aggressive enough to where 4 mana for a 2-2 two -two does not affect the board a massive amount. Um to where you do fall behind a little bit even drawing the card off of this plus with our deck i mean we have triple rogue refiner we have three three mana three twos that draws a card and give us energy so nibble innovator is just strictly worse than three other cards in our deck so yeah that, that would be the one creature that i maybe cut here definitely don't want to cut too many creatures because we're already gonna be mildly low there down at 15 creatures so yeah we'll cut nibble innovator and that's it and then we cut five non-creature cards with all this great removal i don't feel a massive need to run the combat tricks that we've picked up like ornamental courage and high spire infusion stratagem might be a little more a little win more 
a little more funny than it's worth, but with triple rogue refiner, this card's so tempting. You know what? Don't know if it's right to run it, but I'm going to run the stratagem no matter what. Actually, Reprisal is probably my least favorite of these removal spells, again, because it's just doing two damage to, to things. Yes, you get to kill two of their early game plays, but Pyrohelix can do that quite often as well for half the cost and at instant speed. What you really want out of four-man removal, I find, in this format is something that can actually kill their 4-4s four and stuff like that, kill their Thriving Rhino before it gets too big, rather than kill two small things still. So let's cut these three immediately, and then we just need to cut two more cards, and that's it. Maybe Appetite for the Unnatural. Um, in my green-red deck that I went three and three with, there were two of the rounds that I lost, though, where I lost to a really sick um, artifact that was not a creature in any way, so the only way that I could have killed it is if I had something like a main deck Appetite for the Unnatural. So I've had some games where having something like this would have been pretty good, and I've had very few games where having this would... Uh, would be a dead card most games this like at least I and mean, this is a pretty bad scenario but it at least kills like a servo often it'll kill at least like a, a sky skiff or something which is actually a, a fine deal but it is the most narrow of our cards but does have the highest upside in those matchups when my opponent has the the really important uh, non-creature artifact that I just can't find a way to kill. Maybe they have a, a Sky Sovereign or whatever, the really big vehicle, and you know if they have that, I can't kill it with a sorcery like Chandra's Revolution because it's not a creature during my turn. Uh, all I can do is bounce it to my opponent's hand, nothing big enough to kill it, so... I don't know, we probably don't need Tezzeret's Ambition, actually. That's probably the next cut. We have three Rogue Refiners drawing one card when they hit the board. We have Illusionist Stratagem drawing us a card when we cast it, and potentially drawing us two cards if we are casting it and flickering a Rogue Refiner. And then we have Leave in the Dust drawing us a card when we cast that. We have Aether Tradewinds potentially again picking up Rogue Refiner to draw another card. Yeah, we'll, we'll definitely cut Ambition. I really don't know how I feel about Appetite for the Unnatural, but just in the interest of getting some experience with it, let's let's put it in the deck this time. Maybe I'm overcompensating for uh, for how good it would have been in our green-red draft uh, by putting it in here, but we'll find out. Gotta gotta try it once, and and then I can really tell. I can really keep track of every time that I've drawn it. My opponent hasn't had an artifact out. So uh, we'll do that and I guess get rid of like Leave in the Dust or Trade Winds here. Trade Winds is cuter, but Leave in the Dust is uh, generally better. Mm. We've got like Seed Sculpture as well. We have so many good Enter the Battlefield effects. Yeah, I'm going to cut Leave in the Dust and just go with the cuter, the cuter bounce spell here, the Trade Winds and the Stratagem. And then, uh, oh, this can flicker... Oh no, it can't flicker artifacts, I was going to say. But Trade Winds can pick up a Prophetic Prism, so that's cute. That's four different things we could flicker, or bring back to our hand to recast and draw a card. Yeah, yeah, we're going to roll with the deck uh, the deck like this here. Let's make sure our mana's all good. I'm going to do this the old-fashioned way, the manual way, and... Uh, well, no, I'm not. No, I'm not. I'm going to look at the numbers it says here. I've got 12 blue, 8 green, 7 red. This way, if I don't like sort them out in a pile here, I can see where my curve lies when I need that uh, that red mana. And uh, Whirler Virtuoso is powerful enough. I don't need the red mana turn 3. So we can treat all these red cards as our late game bombs. Even the uh, red removal, like it's removal so you can play it later in the game. So we currently have three, four red sources without putting a single mountain in the deck. I think I put a single mountain and then five red sources. Although, probably want to, um, probably want to like reverse engineer this and check what our highest color counts are first. Because if I have enough mana fixing that I have like twelve blue sources, I could definitely cut down on blue sources. Because your average deck is like a ten-seven split or a 9-8 split between two colors. So if I have 12 blue sources in the deck, I already have more of my primary color than a deck that isn't three color, you know? So let's see. Let's have the most sources of blue. We have five, six, seven, eight, nine already. Yeah, that's pretty great. And for green, we have nine as well. Let's add one blue source and then two more red sources, I think. That would be 10 ways to get blue mana, 9 ways to get green mana, and now 7 ways to get red mana. 
Yeah, and that just seems very consistent. That seems super nice. Yeah, we'll go with that for the mana base and uh, see how this deck does as we head into the gameplay. All right, mana's a little awkward here, but I'm still going to keep it. We have more blue sources than any other source, and we know we have a turn three Thriving Rhino, which is super nice. Uh-oh, turn one Minister of Inquiries is spooky. We've got a red mana for all our removal spells if we draw any of them, but this card can mill really, really quickly. Three cards per turn, and it is not hard at all to get at least one energy per turn. Opponent's going to Cathartic Reunion, discard a couple cards they're not interested in to draw three. All right, drawn to a Thriving Turtle. Been drawing pretty well here. We've got the blue source, and now we've got uh, a turtle down. Our deck is actually a little more susceptible to mill than your average deck, because we're going to draw a lot of cards. Off of Rogue Refiners and the like. Consulate Turret, they get, a, they get an energy every turn, meaning they're going to mill us every turn. That's very true and very unfortunate. Like to draw cards to draw my removal for the minister as quickly as possible, but I also like to beat my opponent down as quickly as possible. I guess Rogue Refiner hits literally just as hard as the Thriving Rhino does anyway. Thriving Rhino hits as a 3-4, Rogue Refiner as a 3-2. So we'll just play the Rogue Refiner and we'll uh, start uh, juicing up the turtle here. More than enough energy to use on both. Wow, and we draw into another Rogue Refiner. That's cool, but uh, I don't want to draw too many cards here while I don't have removal for the Minister. Yeah, we're definitely attacking with the Turtle twice to get it big enough to attack into the Minister. They are going to mill me again. They have not milled any of my removal. So we still have two Pyro Helix and two Revolution. Plenty of bounce spells as well to slow it down, but then they can recast it and get more energy. I guess not plenty, I just have an Aether Trade Winds now. Oh, there's the Puzzle Knot. Yeah, they are never running out of that uh, that mill mana. We need to outrace this Minister. It's going to be hard to do, they've drawn one of their removal spells. Scrapper Champion, that hits hard. Don't need to dig for removal here, but if we can't draw removal, then our backup plan is just outracing the minister, so play the most aggressive creatures we can. Down to below 20 cards already, and they've milled one of our four removal spells. There's Aether Trade Winds, that can slow it down. Give us a turn off. Three mana to play that, though. It's kind of a hefty fee right now. Kind of want a Rogue Refiner so I can get a counter on both of these this turn. See if I can draw into a Pyro Helix as well. 17 cards now. So I've got a little breathing room before I have to trade wins. I can blow up their consulate turret, but it doesn't matter. They've got enough energy to mill us 15 more, which is game. Well, they're taking it all down to 12. Starting to feel like it's very possible to outrace this. Alright, they've still only milled one of our four removal spells. So we have three out of these 14 cards. There's a glimmer of genius for our opponent, though. They descry into their removal. Get this champion off the board, gain a bunch of life. Not gain a bunch of life, but stop a bunch of damage. Very similar, but not the same. Maybe a good blocker instead here. Could be an ice over or a malfunction or something. Keep the champion tapped. Windkin Raiders is the play, just a big blocker. 
And a second Minister of Inquiries. Good God. I cannot draw my removal for the life of me. I can probably outrace my opponent, though. No, not with double. Not with double. Because they're going to mill me three. I go to ten cards in library. I can bounce the other minister, I guess. Six mana. I can play a Thriving Rhino to have four energy here to be able to put energy into both of these creatures again and then still hold up Aether Trade wins mana. Think that's the play. And then we Aether Trade wins our Rogue Refiner and their Summoning Sick Minister, because if I trade wins the one that isn't Summoning Sick, um, they can just tap it in response. Actually hold up Appetite by Tapping a red source, I doubt we're going to play it, but maybe. All right. Yeah, I guess I don't hold it up because I'm going to put a counter on both of these. Okay. Attacking really hard. They will chump block the Scrapper Champion. And take seven. Cool. I think I actually pick up the Rhino. So I can get more energy recasting it next turn. If I hit another land, I play Mori and Rhino. I guess Mori already gives me the energy for both the other attackers. But I actually don't want to play the card that makes me draw a card at this point. All right, we're just going to give that Minister Summoning Sickness again. We're down to 10 cards in Library. Still three removal spells in there. They milled one still. Okay. If I draw a removal spell, I have two turns to kill them. If I don't, I only have one turn to kill them. Because as it stands, they'll mill me three in my end step. And I will have uh, six cards in library at that point. Then I would pass to them. They would mill six by tapping both. So I need to be able to kill one of them. If I can't kill my opponent this turn, I have to kill one of the ministers. This is my last chance to draw one of my four removal spells. If I don't find lethal and I didn't draw it. So I need to find lethal or present enough damage here to where they have to chump block with one minister. They do have to chump block with one minister. Well, yeah, because these are both presenting five damage. If I play some energy first. Which means oh, I can't play Thopterist and Rhino because I need to get energy to make this present lethal, make this five power. I need to get two energy here. Then I only have four mana left, which is not enough to play Thopterist, so we have to just play Mori and Rhino. not ideal because Thopterus will make it really easy to find that next damage, that last damage next turn. Okay. We definitely kill a minister here. See a need to make the champion any bigger at this point. Yep, we kill a minister. 
Down to six cards. Then we just get this board wide, play a Rhino. We're down to three cards if they mill us now and in their turn, but that's still alive. Yep. Six cards. Tap again, that's three cards, but this is the board state. Cathartic reunion from our opponent. They're digging for, for an out here. Aether Theorist. It's not going to save them. Nor is Ruinous Gremlin. I think by the skin of our teeth with three cards in library, we're going to attack for lethal and take that game. So our opponent scoops them up. That was a very, very cool deck to see from our opponent. It is a deck that I've been talking up a bit, the Minister of Inquiry's Mill deck being a very real threat. And while I'm sad I wasn't the one that got to show it to you, because we've only got one more Kaladesh Remastered draft after this, so pr pretty unlikely I get to play the Minister of Inquiry's Mill deck. I'm still happy you all got to see it and see that it is a very real threat. Good lord. Almost got completely milled out there. If my opponent just had like a little more removal, um, they could have locked me out of it. Like say they had a turn one uh, or turn two um, pacification module, the the one mana artifact that for two mana you tap it and tap a target. This would have been a really hard game to win. They were got really really close. We essentially had three cards in the library because they had one more tap. So uh, whew, whew, that was some spooky stuff. Game one. Alright, here we are in game two. I need to hit one land, but then I'm at Rogue Refiner. I'm at Whirler Virtuoso as well, thanks to this Aether Hub. We're on the draw here, which makes me think this is not the greediest keep ever, because I need to hit just literally any land. Aether Hub works, and we're there. Now we can just play everything, because Rogue Refiner is going to draw us another card. Yeah, we're just, we're good. We are set up for life here. Unfortunately, our opponent's on the play with a turn one thriving turtle, so that thing's probably going to go off. Attack is a 1-4, next turn it'll attack is a 2-5. If they can play at least one more energy producer next turn, which is pretty likely. Double Aether Hub. I probably should have played an island in case I hit uh, a forest or a mountain. I just think it's neat. That way I would have an Island of Forest and an Aether Hub next turn to be able to cast Rogue Refiner without spending any energy on it. Alright, and that's going to be a 2-5 Thriving Turtle if they want. Which it will be. It's going to be very hard for us to kill. But we've got a 2-3 to block it. We could go for this next turn. Alright, we didn't hit a Forest or a Mountain, so I'm pretty chill with just... Uh, Spending the energy here to cast a card. If this Whirler Virtuoso does not die, Rogue Refiner, and we draw a forest, I guess, then Rogue Refiner could give us enough energy to make another Thopter. Suspicious, this has to be a uh, combat trick out of their green mana. This is a free attack, though, because we're tapped out. We're tapped out. They have five toughness. They have absolutely no reason not to attack here and threaten to have a combat trick so they could very well have nothing and just get two free damage in. But losing Whirler Virtuoso would be really bad, so it's not worth the risk. But that is a free bluff for our opponent. Make a Thopter uh, so it doesn't have summoning sickness. Forest, forest. Yeah, forest. Let's go. The dream. Now we have enough energy for another Thopter here. Maybe I should play played Rhino so I can get aggressive back at them. Okay, at this point I only have two more energy in my hand, which is not enough to make another Thopter, so I'll trade my Virtuoso into their combat trick. I mean, I have a lot more energy in this deck. Oh, I just lost. 
I'd say five mana eight eight trample. <laughs> a five mana four four trample that puts four plus one plus one counters wherever they want. Yeah, I just lost. I guess I do have appetite for the unnatural in this deck. So I do have one removal spell that can kill that gear hulk. Gear Seeker Serpent is a big blocker that I can afford. I actually can't afford any of my red spells since I spent all the energy on the next Thopter. Maybe that was a misplay. Not going to matter this turn because this turn's pretty likely. It's just going to be Gear Seeker Serpent no matter what. But it could matter next turn where I need to spend removal. Show me your uh, your combat trick here. Was it plus three plus three to make it a 10 10? We still have five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten power. Plus three plus three is the biggest trick I can think of. There's ornamental courage for plus one plus three. Blossom defense plus two plus two. Okay, so that's yep. Still the seven seven's dead. Now we just have to deal with the thriving turtle. Alright, and we drew into the mountain. That worked. Pretty well for us. Pretty great turn. Um, now I can just shoot the gremlins and tap down their mountain with the uh, revolution and play seed sculpture in the same turn. Yeah. Seems like a play. And this turtle's only hitting us for three a turn. Don't really think I need to block it, because if they attack with it, then my rogue refiner gets to get in. And we hit them for more than they're hitting us. I can chump block with seed sculpture whenever I need to in the future. Uh, definitely dropping a rhino. We've got a pyro helix up to do some damage to my opponent's face. It's another trick. High Spire Infusion. Pyro Helix doesn't win this fight. Just makes it a trade. Um, oh, it doesn't even make it trade because it's 6 toughness. Okay, yeah. Well, now they have 2 more energy, so they're hitting us for 4 a turn. It's a very close race here. It's going to be kind of dependent on what we draw into. Unfortunately, all their creatures are three toughness. Pyro he looks looking real bad here. Yep, yeah, hit me for four a turn now. Chump blocking yet? Seed Sculptor's never going to get in, so... Sure. Appetite for... <laughs> no, I already killed the 7-7. Seven, seven. No, game. Okay, um... They crack back for five if I attack like this. I'm cracking for three, four, five, six. Potential to gain two life. If I attack for six, that puts them to five life, which is dead to Pyrohelix next turn, so I think it's worth it. Unless they have another trick here. Okay. So they did go for the chum blocks. They're not at six. If they have another trick, we're just dead. Oh. Oh. Oh, thank you, Arena. Arena knew what was best for me. I complained a lot about that appetite. And then my opponent just drops a scary mythic rare artifact. Oh. All right, well, we're one for one on good hits for uh, <laughs> for the appetite for the unnatural. Good lord. Double pyro helix. Oh, they're so dead. We just got there. That's four damage to their face. Well, they blocked enough to not die this turn. Four to their face does not kill a five life opponent. Pima Aether Seer, that forces a blocker. More importantly, it gets a ton of energy to keep putting into the uh, the turtle. 
Okay, force the refiner to block, that's fine. I was probably going to block anyway. Because I've got uh, lethal in the sky, thanks to these. I don't like the auto tap here, but it doesn't matter. They've got no cards in hand. Alright, and they scoop them up. The auto tapper actually tapped us out of potential double red. Actually, am I out of energy? I might be out of energy, and then it doesn't matter. And the auto tapper was smart. Yeah, I'm out of energy, so I couldn't have played both in one turn. Alright. That was some, some good stuff from our deck. Fought through a Verderous Gear Hulk and a Planar Bridge. Real big thriving turtle. Pretty scary deck from our opponent. Very, very nice deck over there, but we drew uh, we drew pretty well to get out of that one. And that is going to be 2-0 and oh, heading into game three. Game three now for the teamer energy deck. This is probably the best curve we've drawn. Turn one turtle, turn two plunderer, turn three rogue refiner, or whirler virtuoso. This is absurd, and we're on the play for it too. If our opponent can beat this. They have a very impressive deck, so we'll see. See what they've got over there with those old gnaw bone sleeves. I think it's the big green mythic dragon. Hold up a Pyro Helix in case they somehow have a one green mana flash creature to try to block with. But they don't, so here's Plunderer to just keep making the turtle bigger every turn. Woodweaver's Puzzle Mop, that doesn't affect the board state. Does not attack or block, which means I think I want a Rogue Refiner and just keep making this turtle insane. make the nastiest turtle ever super quickly. Then I can just play a Thriving Rhino and put more counters on the turtle. Although it's already getting counters from Plunderer. Yeah, we'll go wide now. We'll Virtuoso post-combat and spread out the board. Ah, Alright. Yeah, it's a little sad. I can't stop that. I could stop their life gain by shooting my own card, but that's not worth it. Alright, let's go a little wide now. Because they are a black deck here, so if they have Daring Demolition to kill the turtle, I don't want to have to spend all... I don't want to have spent all of my energy into just making the turtle like a 5-7 or 5-8. I would rather start making my board white against the black deck. Yeah, so they have targeted removal here. They're choosing between the turtle and the Virtuoso, so very happy with the choice to drop Virtuoso rather than Thriving Rhino pre-combat to make the Thriving Turtle even bigger. Um, Refiner doesn't give me enough energy to do anything immediately anyway, so I think I'm just going to play a Thriving Rhino to start hitting with. We don't really need more cards right now, we just need more threats to close out this game as quickly as possible before my opponent has any chance of stabilizing. So we'll put the slightly bigger creature down. Pima Outrider. Uh, it's actually good for us if they spread it out here. Fortunately, they did not. Probably tack with everybody in Pyro Helix. Pretty hard for them to survive. I actually don't know if they can. Three, four, five, six. Yeah, they can. They can just barely survive. They can't survive if they block Virtuoso. So, very smart block from them. I probably would have just blocked Virtuoso because it's the scariest creature, but... Hmm... I'm just going to play Rogue Refiner. I don't think I need to kill that Pima Outrider to, to win here. And I'd rather have the Pyro Helix to, uh, to easily find lethal. Then clear the Outrider out of the way. Because now I just hit them for one with this Thopter and then finish it. And gain life when they sack that? They do gain life when they sack that. That's a big deal. Well, it could be a big deal. Fen Holler, so they've got two blockers, they're at three life. Alright, nice. So we got there. I guess I had lethal just attacking with everybody. Because they block the two three powers and take the two. Yeah, literally just attack everybody, block, block, one, two, three on board. Oops, that was a little bit more. Did not need to 
Pyrohelix the face, but another line that uh, that gets the win, so we'll take it. We'll get there, and we will be 3-0. and oh, Very solid run, no matter what happens from this point on. Here we are now in game four. Our opponent is on the play. No red source is rough. We've drawn three of our red cards here. Is it worth a mulligan when I still have turtle and we're on the draw? Probably is. Turtle alone isn't going to accomplish anything. Yeah, I'm going to mulligan this one. Much better mana here, but worse cards. Keep this, and I think get rid of a land. Geesh Seeker is not going to matter till super late in the game, but most of my cards are three or less. All my important ones for sure, the triple refiner and stuff. We could draw into. Yeah. I don't know, this is better than the first hand. It's not great. Can sack that at instant speed, can't they? Yeah, I can't appetite that, as funny as it would be. Kujar Seed Sculptor of their own. The Seed Sculptor War begins. Seed Sculptor versus Seed Sculptor. Scrap Trawler is the play. I'd probably like to kill that before they get any other artifacts in their graveyard. Um, I'm just going to Appetite that instead of Pyrohelix it. I feel like Pyrohelix hits more things. An appetite will. This could be the play that costs us the game, though, if they just drop, like, I don't know, a self assembler or something. Some big, big artifact, an untethered express. Eh, maybe it was Pyrohelix. Was the line. Pacification array. Alright, well, Pyrohelix is the line. Now I gotta deal with this pacification array, which will not be fun. Well, they're still not attacking us, at least. But that thing's gonna keep this gear seeker down forever. Just slam a strategium just to draw a card. Yeah, we're just chilling, we're vibing. Waiting for our opponent to draw the lands they need to cast their spells, pretty much. Oh, there we go, that's a great one. I should have played my mountain in case they had a metallic rebuke counter unless I pay three. Ooh. Yeah, this makes our illusionist stratagem super sweet now that we have a rogue refiner on the board. And an aether trade wins is a good one too. Okay, they have their red source now. It is a mirror match. We'll see what they've got for four mana. Wild Wanderer. I don't actually want to put that in their hand because I don't want to get them another land, so I guess I'll just Pyrohelix that. Alright, it worked out okay. I found something to kill with Pyrohelix. And I will just shoot that so we can get an attack in with Rogue Refiner. I actually wouldn't be that happy if they traded our if their Seed Sculptor for our Rogue Refiner, but it would get the paths clear for our other Seed Sculptor. But yeah, with all this flicker in hand, I would actually hope they don't trade. So I don't know if I even make the attack. Shipwreck Moray. I've got six mana. I could trade wins their Seed Sculptor back to hit with our Seed Sculptor and recast Rogue Refiner. I think I would rather trade wins something bigger later. Oh, I wish I had one more mana so I can Moray and still hold up the trade wins. Just drop a Moray and pass, I guess. Tezzerat's Ambition is just going to draw three, okay.
Thriving turtle, that's going to be a way to use all this energy. They're going to have to start tapping down the turtle every turn. And I can play that and still hold up stratagem and trade wins. And or trade wins. Send in everybody now, they probably block Rogue Refiner. I'm not going to trade my Moray into it, but if they don't block, I deal four to them. So this way I guarantee I deal two damage, I guess. Well, they're going to block neither. All right, we'll just get all the damage in then. I've got more than enough for this turtle. Especially with these bounce spells to get even more energy. We're going to get four more energy, six more energy and draw a card when I cast Stratagem. Aether Torch Renegade. Okay, luckily one damage is not enough to kill any of our cards, but that is scary. Also potentially shoot our face. Um, yeah, that resolves. We can flicker it after it's resolved. Still get the value off of it. Now this stratagem is incredible. They do have three men up for, for rebuke because they can improvise the array, but I can't play around it because even if I play trade wins here, I only have two mana up, so I'm just going to play the better spell and hope they don't have it. Nice. It's going to be sick. Get a million energy, draw a card, completely kill their ice over. Now we have 13 energy and a scrapper champion in hand. The mana for Gear Seeker Serpent as well now. Now I'm just sending everybody, because even if Rogue Refiner dies, we've got just sick stuff. Okay, block the turtle. Trade with the Refiner. Hit for six here. While we still can, while they can't shoot the Moray when we make it a 4-1. High Spire Infusion. Uh, you know what, at that point... Sure. Just trade wins. I guess I didn't need to bounce their card. I should have bounced their Pacification Array, I guess. So all I needed to do was bounce Refiner to save it. Probably should have played Scrapper Champion there. Now that they're down to 8, we're kind of just trying to put the biggest threats on the board. Rashmi, uh-oh. When they cast their first spell each turn, reveal the top card of their library. They can cast it for free or draw it. Uh, but Rashmi was their first spell this turn, so she doesn't do anything this turn. Okay. Yeah, I really should have bounced Pacification Array. Instead of Seed Sculptor, so they could choose. They couldn't, like, re-choose where to put the, the counter. I guess it didn't matter, because they're just doing the same thing. I guess it stopped them from getting the two energy off of the infusion. Played out fine. Okay, um, we go to combat. They probably tap down the Moray. None of these affect combat, so we'll just go straight in. They're going to tap their refiner, let the Moray get in. I guess the Moray is only big enough to win a fight if I make it a 4-1 and then they shoot it with Renegade. That's fair. Yeah, none of these actually get in. They're all essentially 2-3s. Thriving Turtle is a 2-5 though, but if I attack with all three of them, one of them gets in or kills the Renegade. And we're at 22, they're at 8, so... We are definitely doing that. Trying to bait us into making the Mori a 4-1. A okay. Nope. Alright, then I don't have to spend any energy on Mori. Uh, we just let this happen. Just do two damage. So 
that the moray does not die to uh to the seed sculptor seven mana i play champion and rhino gear seeker can be unblockable and deal five which is pretty threatening i think i'm going wide again because if I play Serpent, they're just going to keep tapping down Serpent. They're always going to tap down my biggest threat anyway. So we'll go wide. Uh, I may play Rogue Refiner, number two, instead of the Rhino. Um, although three, four status is pretty nice against these two threes. Yeah, no, we'll play Rhino. All right. Got stuff all over the board here. Opponent is at six life, but they have a Rashmi now drawing them an extra card every turn, potentially casting something for free. They have a pacification array to lock things down. They have two two threes to block with and a one two that pings things. They're gonna cast an oval chase dragster, try to hit something off top, just a land to draw. Dragster, they can crew that and block with a six one, so they can definitely trade that off into whatever they need to. Probably kill the thriving turtle on blocks now. 13 energy, so no reason to play anything pre-combat here. We'll go straight into the combat. They tap down Scrapper Champion now. We attack with everybody else. And the Dragster is probably killing the Thriving Turtle. And then the two threes, one of the two threes, well, both of them block the, uh, the mores. Oh, no, they're going to tap that one so they can still have Renegade up to tap. Okay, they're going to kill the Thriving Rhino. Uh, we're going to hit for five, I believe. Yep, we're going to hit for five. If I pump again, they just shoot the moray. So we'll put them to one. And then... Big trampling uh, lifecraft cavalry and draw a card. There are no wrath effects in this format. No board wipes for green, blue, and red. Unless my opponent somehow gets two white sources down. They can't wrath of god. So we're just going to go super wide because they cannot wipe the board. Whirler Virtuoso is a pretty big one off of Rashmi here because that's two blockers. Don't think it's enough because we went so insanely wide and we have a big trampler that they have to tap down so the double striker gets in. Uh, and yeah, it looks like it's going to be game. We're going to be four and oh now. Very long uh, game there thanks to the... Uh, the icy manipulator effect, the tapper, slowing us down a lot. Here we are now in game five. This is theoretically an awkward hand mana-wise, but we've got the prism, so we're, like, fine. Got basically every color. <laughs> and double aether hub, so it's actually perfect mana. It is a slow hand, which can be a problem. But we have drawn into a 3-drop now, and that means it's just all these super powerful cards starting on turn 3. Hopefully fast enough. We are against Boros. They can be pretty aggressive, and they do have a Sky Skiff down already to crew with whatever they play this turn. So they're going to crew with the Gremlins, hit for 2. Not great. Not great. Not ideal. Drop the Thriving Rhino here. Just making sure Arena uses the Prism and not the Aether Hub. So we can keep that energy. They're gonna go land and then uh, revolution the Rhino. Maybe. They could have Hungry Flames for three damage to it off of three mana. Or they could just hit us with Sky Skiff again. The Rhino does not have reach. All right, Frontline Rebel. It's a 3-3 three, three for 3. It has to attack each turn of Fable, but if you have vehicles, that's how you get around that, is that you can just crew a vehicle if it's not a good attack for that card. Um, 
So at four mana, what do I want to do here? Do I want to scrap our champion? I kind of want to scrap our champion. Probably supposed to be on the defensive here, where maybe I just Chandra's Revolution and they can't play another card next turn. That's actually, that's pretty nice. I think I kill the Gremlins, because the 4-3 Trample, whenever they play an artifact, is pretty sketchy. The fact that Rebel always has to attack is kind of a decent downside when we have a 0-5 to play in the future. Or I could just hold up a 3-4 blocker after this turn. Okay. Really hoping that the locking down a land here effect works pretty well for us since our opponent was stuck on mana that turn. Hopefully this means they just don't get to cast anything this turn. That would be super sweet. That is the biggest reason that got me to go for this line. Hit us for three with Rebel. Oh yeah, that's a full value Chandra's Revolution. That was a great turn for us. I have the mana to play Plunderer and Refiner here. So I think I will. Refiner's big enough to block Rebel. Um, I will have to spend... Oh wait, no, I can Prophetic Prism. Oh yeah, we're we're so good here. I'm playing the uh, Refiner pre-combat so the Rhino gets even bigger. Oh, now we have an Appetite to kill the Sky Skiff. Things are looking great. All right, 13 to 13, but our board state is great in comparison here. We can crew the Sky Skiff if they don't want Rebel to trade in to the refiner. They're really eyeballing our cards a lot here, trying to see. Maybe they have some burn to use a combat trick or something. Attack for nine on the crackback. I feel like we win this long game handedly, so I'm just gonna do everything I can to stop any more damage. But, like, we have several super impactful plays after this turn still. Let's just make sure I'm at a pretty safe life total to keep the lead. Alright, sure, Pyrohelix the 2-1, shoot me for 1. I still got the Thriving Rhino, which will still just keep getting bigger and bigger. Rapper Champion threatens the most damage in the future, so we'll drop that. Also the hardest one for them to block, well, a 3-3 Double Striker. It is most likely to die to red removal, though. That is one consideration. We could have gone for Shipwreck Mori since it's unlikely to die to red removal, but they also have double white here. They could have revoke privileges to uh, tap something down. All right, they did have... Removal for that still gives us that energy to get this Thriving Rhino in. And that Rhino is now a 6-7. They are down to 2 life, and now we'll just play Thopterus. So we have Lethal in the sky as well. And I get to hold up Appetite for Unnatural thanks to the Improvise ability, letting us tap Prism as one of the generic, uh, one of the colorless mana there. The opponent's going to scoop them up, still stuck on three mana here. So we're just going to take over. Thriving Rhino. What was it, a 6-7 at the end of that game? Big old Rhino. We are now 5 and oh, We are now up in gyms. We are in the money, in the value, as we head into game 6. Here we are, game six. Opponent is on the play. We've got a Pyro Helix for early interaction. Rhino as our first play on three. Scrapper Champion on four. Very threatening stuff. I like it. Now we've got a three, four, and five drop creature to get down. Okay. Naturally draw the red source. So now I can Pyro Helix without spending an energy if I need to. Playing against black green here. 
no plays on the first three turns. We like to see that with a slow hand like this. Let's get this driving rhino down. Could be a handful of interaction, just like ours. Bunch of removal here, kill our rhino, kill our champion. Yep, daring demolition. Looks like the plan. We'll see if they can kill the champion. Hopefully not. But even if they can, we now have two more creatures, a skyship plunder and a cavalry for after this. And we can kill basically anything they play. Um, If they have a combat trick here, if it's the plus one plus O, oh, that's not going to win the fight. And if it's any green one that makes it bigger, Pyrohelix can probably stack up. Double Pyrohelix can definitely stack up. Worst case scenario, so we'll send the champion in with double pyro helix thanks to aether hub we've got a really good backup plan if they're trying to uh use some big combat tricks to win this fight we can ruin that plan for our opponent let's post combat virtuoso here maybe This is six damage if they don't block, so they could also maybe just go for a chump block. Subtle strike. Put a plus one plus one counter on a creature, give a creature minus one minus one. So they're gonna make their Druid of the Cowl a 2-4, and they're going to make my Scrapper Champion a 2-2. Two, two. Uh, I only need to cast one Pyro Helix to win this fight, so I'm gonna wait till they go for the block here. So that I can win this fight. Um, and Scrapper Champion's only minus one, minus one until end of turn, which is the nice part. So you just first strike that away, and then we still have the mana for Plunderer. And pass turn. Alright, very nice stuff. Instant speed burn alongside first strike is, is so rude. I mean, double strike even even worse and opponent's just gonna scoop them up there i don't know what they had in hand there but apparently nothing good enough to stop a 4-4 double striker coming at them this turn it's actually gonna be a 4-4 double striker and if they have no removal a 4-4 double striker that turns into a 5-5 double striker after i deal the damage yeah they're in a they're in a bad spot here if their hand is not great so they're just gonna scoop them up after not being able to win that subtle strike combat so we are six and oh with this teamer energy deck we are firmly in the money and heading into what may be the final boss. See if we can't get another 7-0 run in the Kaladesh Remastered Drafts. All right, here we are on the play in what could be the final game. Could be the final boss if we win this game. And this is a curve and a half. This turtle is going to be real big. A 2-5 attacking on turn 2 thanks to Seed Sculptor. And then we're going to drop a Rhino on turn 3. And hopefully... That is going to be too much for our opponent to deal with. Just massive creatures thanks to us being on the play here. These just snowball effect cards that just keep rolling and getting bigger and bigger and bigger. And they are green-red, so their removal is likely to be damage-based. And we hit our red source here. So it's going to be very hard for our opponent to kill a 3-6. Um, I could save my energy to make my Rhino a 3-4, but I think I'd rather be attacking with a 3-6 into their 1-3. they're gonna take it they're down to 15 here now we have the removal to clear out that one three and tap down one of their lands to keep them off of a, a large card next turn unless they play a big card this turn i need to shoot instead but hopefully they don't have a good four drop right now sweat works brawler that's not a bad one hmm is that weak enough for me to want to just skyship plunderer here and hold on to revolution i don't think so we get a lot of damage in and still lock down a land which seems very good as much as i'd love to lock down a green source they'll still have one green up thanks to druid so it really it doesn't matter either way which one i tap down we will still have one source of each color all right opponents down to nine and we can always pyro he looks their face for the final two damage later as a possibility 
All right, Spire Sight Infiltrator. Never mind. We're going to Pyro Helix that off the board because that'll get us uh, more damaging because it'll keep the Rhino on the board instead of having the Rhino trade off into that. We'll hit for six, and they're down to three life now against this board state. Really showing off how disgusting that Chandra's Revolution is when you're on the play. We've won a couple games off of that if we win this game. Oh, Chandra's Revolution still good um, on the draw, but that's still... We're going to have lethal against them because they had to tap the Druid to play it. And uh, it's going to be a 7-0 and run in this Kaladesh Remastered Premier Draft with this Teamer Energy deck. This deck was sick. We had the great thriving creatures, the thriving turtles and the thriving rhinos. Um, that, as we've seen several times, just take over the game, becoming so big for such a cheap entry fee. Just one mana for a card that will often end up attacking as a 2-5 at least. And then Thriving Rhino is just three mana for what's definitely attacking as like a 3-4. Triple Rogue Refiner was one of the most busted things we had in this deck. Having one Rogue Refiner in your deck is pretty good. Having three is absolutely absurd. The red removal off of the splash was quite nice. The revolutions really showing off their power level, being able to slow down multiple multiple of our opponents, making it harder for them to establish enough blockers quickly enough to stop some of our early aggro leads. And then double pyro helix also showing off their flexibility, um, being potentially thrown at some opponents' faces in some of those games. So, uh, yeah, really, really, really great stuff from this deck. Nothing really massively overperformed or underperformed i'd say everything did its job and did its job just as well as we thought it would appetite for the unnatural i think we got to cast this every single time we drew it and it was uh it was very good in some of those games we killed a planar bridge <laughs> that was that was pretty nice uh so yeah appetite was uh i'm still always scared of this card still even in the games that i drew it i was always like <laughs> i was always a little scared um because it is narrow, but it, it panned out. Uh, Trade Winds was great. Stratagem was great. Um, in this deck with Triple Rogue Refiner, like that panned out. Obviously, all the red removal was important and very good. Prism was fantastic. Thopterist was great. Being able to cheat that out with a Prism a little early was awesome. Uh, Gear Seeker Serpent was actually a bit of an underperformer in this deck. It was always like going to cost all of our mana when we already just had some pretty, pretty, pretty big threats on board thanks to the energy. Uh, threats like the thriving creatures so uh i guess gear seeker serpent is actually probably one of the biggest underperformers just because we very rarely wanted to play this often when we had it in hand we just had other options in hand where we could play two spells in one turn get our board wider maybe play some evasive threats that i don't have to spend a bunch of mana to make evasive but gear seeker serpent still definitely a good card i have uh i've played a lot of these in some other decks and done some great things with them so uh so yeah shipwreck mori really easy card to overlook but this card, when you actually get into combat with it, as you saw in that game against the um, against the uh, the red pinger that does one damage to any target, as you can see there, it's just so flexible. It's like if your opponent doesn't block it, then you could just make it a four one and deal four to your opponent's face. If they do block it, they could block it with like a four four, and you could just choose not to put any energy into it, so it still survives. So it's a really good way when you have a wide board state to add this to your stack of attacking creatures, and it really doesn't matter what they do with it. If they block it, great, you're not losing your creature, and you're getting damage in with your other creatures that are getting through. And if they don't block it, great, you're just gonna get in four damage. So shipwreck more a probably. A big one I want to mention here in the um, in the end game recap. Not that it was a huge contributor to our successes or failures or anything like that, but uh, I, I just liked that card a lot. I thought it was uh, I thought it was pretty sweet there. So um, yeah, and the four energy that you get off of it that's just great. That's that part is clearly good. Um, getting four energy in a deck like this with all these thriving creatures and the scrapper champion being the big bomb. So yeah, super super sweet run from this Kaladesh Remaster draft. Um, I, be I believe our record is now 7-0 into 3-3 into 7-2 and then 7-0. So uh, pretty dang sweet time with the Kaladesh Remaster Jeffs. But that is going to end today's video. If you want to see some more videos like this, make sure to like, comment, and subscribe to let the YouTube algorithm know to send you some more in your recommended feeds. We've got one more day of Kaladesh Remaster Drafts, then Amonkhet Remastered is the next draft format we'll be playing for a couple days. That is the format that is based 
based around Nicol Bolas and Egyptian mythology uh, pyramids and stuff like that, mummies. Very, very cool format. Excited to play a couple of those drafts, but very shortly after that, on September 1st or September 2nd, I believe, Dominar United will be releasing on Magic Arena the next main set, the next newest standard legal set draftable set um, the next competitive set for the upcoming arena open and qualifier weekend so the next primary set dominar united is just around the corner so we've got tons and tons of more draft and sealed content on the way if you're interested but as always thank you very much for watching this video i hope you enjoyed watching this as much as i enjoyed playing it definitely love to get a 7-0 run uh, but other than that once again thank you very much for watching and i will See you again soon for some more Magic Arena.